See this rock? This is going to be this week's rock, right, on Rock of the Week. Notice how it's quite platty, like quite flat. This is known as slate, but obviously it's quite rounded as well, like in this case, and sometimes you can get slate that can be very angular, but this is rounded because it's been tumbled about on a beach, same with this one here. But we're going to talk about slate and how it forms, right? And in particular, this slate that I'm holding in my hand. So slate is a metamorphic rock. It's been put under pressure and temperature, low grade pressure and temperature is a low grade metamorphic rock. When it comes to metamorphism, it's separated into low, medium and high grade, depending on the amount of pressure that this rock has been put under and also the temperatures that it's been put under. Now slates usually form when there's regional metamorphism and regional metamorphism is usually a big tectonic event such as a mountain building event where you have two plates collide with each other and you have continents collide with each other and continental thickening. And that's usually what regional metamorphism is, right? But before we get into all that, we need to talk about what this used to be before. Because metamorphic rocks are basically those that have changed over geological time. And they've changed due to this pressure and temperature that the rock's been put at. So let's go back in time. What did this bad boy used to be? Well... It used to be a mudstone, probably. A combination of muds, silts and sands. And I've already drawn it here, right? So, back in the day, mud, silt and sand was probably carried down by rivers, deposited in rivers along the way, deposited into the sea, at the edge of the sea, just off the coast of, you know, even in Scotland we've had sand, silts and muds like deposited off the coast of Laurentia back in the day, right? That's what your Dalladian supergroup and your Moy supergroup was. So layer upon layer upon layer of all this sediment accumulates and turns into sandstones, siltstones and mudstones. And what happens to the mudstones and the shales? Well, they end up turning into slate when they're put at pressures, high pressures and temperatures. So usually when you've got like the two pressures at either side, two plates that are kind of pushing and squeezing, these horizontal layers then end up starting to foliate and eventually the start even fully and even more, right? And what happens is because of the high temperatures and high pressures, and you need to think about it in a way that, well, slate's actually low temperatures and low pressures around 300 degrees Celsius, 400 degrees Celsius, and it's like pressures that are quite shallow in the crust. You're talking like five to 15 kilometers like within the crust, right? It's like the first metamorphic rock that forms from basically shale or mudstone. But what happens is, you have the alignment of all the minerals. So all of the minerals start aligning up and you get this thing called a cleavage form in the rock and it gives like off this shine and it starts foliating and because all the minerals are aligning a certain way, it forms this cleavage and that's what makes slate so durable and that's what makes slate like, you know, when you can like kind of break it to pieces in layers. That's why it does that, because all of the minerals are platy and they all align. The minerals start growing and you end up with like chemical compositional changes and stuff within the rock. And the rock undergoes ductile deformation when it's put at this depth. And that's what basically regional metamorphism is. Like, it goes through phases though. It goes from a slate and then turns into a phyllite, which is the next rock in the sequence. The deeper you get, it then turns into a schist which is even more shinier and the minerals have grown that much that it starts looking like glitter. And then it turns into a nice, which is really glittery, but banded. It separates all the compositional minerals into their bands, like depending on what their composition is. And that's kind of like regional metamorphism that's shown there. But when I'm talking about regional metamorphism, we're going to rub this out and we're going to talk about regional metamorphism for a bit and how you get regional metamorphism, it's always related to convergent plate boundaries. And when I talk about convergent plate boundaries, that's probably going to be phase one, right? Convergent. We have our oceanic crust which we spoke about before, is a lot denser than your continental crust. 
because it's made up of mafic minerals, right? And then this is your continental crust. And what happens is, because this is a lot denser, it subducts under the continental crust. So this is moving that way, that's moving this way. And you've got also mantle convection as well, which is pulling this slab down. Slab's very cold, it just wants to sink, it's dense, and that's obviously going that way. And back up somewhere, right? so this is a mantle... That's obviously your oceanic crust and your continental crust. This is your, probably going to be your sea, you know. And sometimes this can be dragging with it like a continent too. That's going that way. So where are you going to get your regional metamorphism? Well, you're usually going to get it in this area here. So obviously... All the rocks that were originally horizontal, if they were horizontal, usually sedimentary rocks are horizontal to begin with, they end up like all oh, foliated to the point that they can even be foliated into foliations, right? And over time, this is pulling down, the slab's pulling down, and you've got melting of the crust, mental, melting of the mantle, which obviously forms like igneous intrusions such as like granites and that but when we actually look at obviously over time as well this kind of gets closer and closer and you get like a big thickening event right crustal thickening but usually at low grade metamorphism you've got this slate that forms first it's the first rock that forms so slate will form closest to you know, the surface. And then you'll have phyllite. Then you'll have schist. Then you'll have gneiss. And these are, these form at certain temperatures. Usually it's like around 300, 300 degrees Celsius, like that you get slate like up until. And slate sometimes can look green, it can look purple. It can look dark grey, like it just depends on its original composition as well, its original protolith. But you get like as well like minerals forming such as clothite and biotite, which are usually associated with slate. So clothite's usually a green kind of colour and when it's got a green tinge to it, that's when you know it's like, you know, clothite and biotite's brownish kind of colour, it's just dotted and muscovite as well. And probably some quartz in there too. And when it comes to slates in the UK, they're actually like divided by in, in different compositions and stuff. Not slates, but like metamorphic rocks, meta sedimentary rocks as well. That we'll probably go into detail in a different video, which are known as, known as samites, peelites, and semi peelites. But I uh, yes, slate basically slate is a metamorphosed rock. There's not much else to say about it. I could go on and do a whole video about metamorphic rocks, and I'll probably do that another time. Maybe not today, but yeah. Slate for you. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Sorted.